here we have a graph of a direct variation relationship. And we can see that this is direct variation. If we look at the graph, it's, it's a straight line and it goes through the origin. And those are the requirements uh, for a relationship that varies directly. In this case, it says Charlie is running and the number of calories he has burned varies directly with the number of minutes he has run. Well, that makes sense. The more minutes he runs, the more calories he burns. What we want to find out is how many minutes does Charlie run per calorie? You know, I always think of per as as the the bar in a fraction or, or divided by. So we want minutes divided by calories or minutes per calorie. So how many minutes does it take to burn one calorie? Well, what I'd like to do then is find two spots on this graph where I can see how many minutes have passed and how many calories have been burned. And it looks to me like we have 0, 0, and then we have this right here where it crosses conveniently at the 10 and the 200. So at that point, he's run for 10 minutes. So that's our minutes. I can put that on top. And the calories he's burned, uh, 200. And of course, we can simplify this. We can divide both by 10. So we get 1 20th. So it takes 1 20th of a minute to burn a calorie for every calorie. So 1 20th minutes per calories. All right. And then it says, what is the slope of the graph? Well, the slope of the graph is actually the reciprocal of that. It's the how much it goes up over how much it goes over. So in that case, here it's going up 200 in that same span and it's going over the 10 minutes. So our slope there after we cancel would be 20. So this was 1 20th of a minute and this was uh, a slope of 20. So that's a little bit of work with the graph of a direct variation relationship.